speaking of uh, articles, because I wrote a whole article on this, which is actually out in the wave this week, it's called Scholars Rap, uh, Social Media, Free Speech, you can check that out. I wrote a draft piece that I was thinking of setting uh, this coming week about the Supreme Court draft decision, which is set to overturn Roe v. Wade. And I was actually advised not to put it out because people are so passionate about the issue and understandably so. And I was trying to take a different approach with it. I was trying to break down the decision from a legal perspective and really criticize it from a constitutional law angle, which I thought was something I could bring to the table that might be a little bit different from some of the other voices out there. Uh, however, I understand that people are so energized and emotional about this right now because it's such a big thing and, and it really affects people's lives in such a deep way that taking a detached approach, even if it's the scholarly thing to do, might come off as insensitive. And so I, you know, I'm holding off on putting out this article, but there's just so much to say on it. I stayed up late last night reading this 98-page decision by the Supreme Court, and I think it's a bad decision even removing my opinions, my beliefs on policy. I'm trying to remove that from the conversation. Just looking at it neutrally, uh, to the best of my ability, I think that it's not made with sound legal reasoning. And I think it's fair to make that point, to, to make that criticism. I agree. But, you know, Mike, we live in cancel culture now. So I think your colleagues are advising you to be tread lightly, because even though you have your opinions, you have the freedom of speech to say that. But Man, people turn on you like that nowadays. I trip, man. Like oh, our, mayor, oh, our mayor out here was doing great during the pandemic. He said one thing and they wanted to cancel him. <laughs> but doesn't this also relate to what we were just talking about, about people being themselves? I mean, why don't we have the freedom to be us and to say what we feel without thinking we're going to be canceled or any of this you know, crazy stuff yeah. that goes on nowadays? And again, if, we, if we're talking about free speech, yeah. People have a right to say that they don't like our speech and they want to boycott us or whatever. That's all part of free speech. But again, going back to culture, why shouldn't the culture be that people should be embraced for being who they are? I agree. I think that's where the shift happened. And I don't know when it happened. I don't know if it's what happened, but, and that's why, like, that's why I came up with the book because, you know, it's part of acceptance. It's part of empathy, understanding, respecting that person's opinion, but this generation is so fast just to cancel you. Like, they just look for people that they can cancel. And Mike, it gets ugly. I mean, death threats, people calling out your family. Like you said, they can Google you and threatening your family, where you live, taking pictures of the outside of your house. Like, that's how crazy they are. That's, you know what I mean? So it's not even them just firing back. It's them being vicious and they're keyboard warriors. So you know, back in the day, we put these up, up and up, meet you in the back parking lot. It's not like that anymore, man. They're making right. threats and you don't even know who they are. So that's where it, it, it's hard. And it's, it's like, you, you're right. I mean, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. Like, we, and that's sad that we can't be ourselves and say our opinion. We have to think twice or three times. I'm going to say it anyway. You know what? I'm going to, and again, this is uh -oh. not opinion on uh -oh. the issue. I'm not speaking on the issue. The, the controversy here is that I was trying to do this in a way that did not interject my own personal feelings. And the feedback I got was, if I say something that sounds neutral, it's going to sound like I don't care about the issue. And that's mm. not the case. I'm trying to take a lawyer's approach here. And I'm trying to say that the opinion as written is trash from a legal perspective, from a constitutional perspective. Mm. What I'm saying is that if you read the opinion that they put out, and today Justice Roberts said that that's not the final opinion. So maybe some of the criticism will be dealt with. And for the first time ever, the Supreme Court will revise his opinion based on public feedback. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But here's the deal. If you read the opinion as it stands now, what they're saying is that the right to abortion that was uh, codified or, or recognized by Roe v. Wade was found from different provisions of the Constitution. First, there was a right to privacy, which was found in the Bill of Rights, you know, when you have freedom of association in the First Amendment, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures in the Fourth, and so on and so forth. They read into that this right to privacy. And then later on, we have a due process clause of the 14th Amendment. We said that there's a liberty interest protected by that, and the right to privacy is included in that. But if you read the Constitution, nowhere in there does it say there is a right to privacy that was implied from the other parts of the Constitution. All right, fine. This has been our framework for many years in the United States. Now, the right to abortion, along with other rights, like the right to use contraception without government interference, the right to have uh, 
intimate contact with your partner outside of a marriage without government interference. All these things were read into this right to privacy, which in itself is read into the Constitution. This opinion that came out last night basically said the right to privacy is implied and, and so is the right to abortion in itself applied in that right to privacy. That's a step too far for us. And what they did is they said that there was no history of uh, the right to abortion being recognized um, in America, but they went back to the 13th century, which is way before there was the United States, and they stopped it at about 1900. So they're looking at ancient history, they're not looking at current history, but nonetheless, they're saying that it's not deeply rooted in history, therefore it doesn't exist. Okay, if you're going to do that, if that's your logic, then that would also seem to invalidate all of the other rights that we have that are derived from that same principle, which is the right to privacy, which again, is not written in the Constitution, but we all recognize it. So for example, we have the right to contraception, to, to use birth control, without the government telling us we can't. That analysis constitutionally is the same as the analysis that gives us the right or gave us the right to an abortion. So if you're gonna overturn this and use that reasoning, you would also be overturning all of these other things as well that we recognize as rights. The court then said, we understand that, and abortion is different though, because it's a unique act. And that was it, that was their analysis, it's, it's a unique act. So all of this, this legal and went for 98 pages was really nonsense because either you're gonna be consistent with your logic or you're not. And this is a logical inconsistency. It's not sound analysis. There's so much more I can say on this, but I, I, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll keep going and I'll leave it at this. They also go on for pages about this idea of uh, honoring precedent or stare decisis, it's called, it's a Latin term, but the importance of precedent. And they're saying that they know they'll be criticized for overturning their own opinion and basically not honoring the precedent. And then they go on to list times throughout history where they overturned themselves. And so we do have the ability to overturn ourselves. The first example that they raised was Brown v. Board of Education which was a landmark Supreme Court decision saying that you could not have segregated public schools. That overturned the principle called separate but equal, which was the law before. There was a horrible Supreme Court case from 1898 called Plessy v. Ferguson, where they said that it was okay to have separate train cars for black people and white people because um, separate did not mean unequal, it was separate but equal. That was the law in 1898. In 1954, they overturned that with Brown v. Board of Education, and they rightfully said that separate is inherently not equal. So they cited this as a way to like pat themselves on the back and say, yeah, you see, we could overturn ourselves. And, and sometimes it's good to do that. But again, if this is the case you're bringing up, what they're saying is that the history of abortion uh, was that it was not legal, right? Like in the old times, you have, to, you have to look at the old times to see that the history was not kind to the notion of abortion. Well, then why wouldn't you look at the history of separate but equal and say, well, in the old times, that was considered a, a permissible thing, separate but equal, right? No, they, they rightfully overturned themselves because they evolved, society evolved, and we had a better understanding of, of the law and the constitution and how we should treat people. And so you can't rely just on these old time decisions, cases for, and, and laws from the 13th century. No, you have to put it into the context of today, but they failed to do that. So again, it's a garbage decision from a constitutional perspective, saying nothing about my personal beliefs. Right. You, you've been stewing all night for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm upset and, and I am passionate about this. And, maybe, and you know what? And maybe it comes off more on this than it would in an article, because in an article, I try to use more neutral language, I guess, and right. you know, see how impassioned I can be about it. I try to keep it very even keel, but you know, it, it's, it's just a terribly written decision. It's a terribly decided, uh, not to mention that damage it's going to do to so many people in the country. I think that's the, you know, I mean, I, I don't think there was anything wrong with what you said. And you, you, you know, you did it from a perspective of the, the, the legal argument and, and you broke down that aspect of it. And I think that's, that's something that's valuable to look at as well. Not just I think it needs you know, to be what someone's opinion is of the actual thing. Like right. it's, that's not even what you're talking about. Actually from a, a law perspective from, you know, um, was this written well? Was, you know, I think it's a, it's a valuable. Was per, the reasoning you know, sound? You know, and, and, and like exactly. there is a danger that if you do that, people will say you don't care because it's like this is too intellectual. This is, you know, right. too cynical. But I think that's something that needs to be part of the conversation. Who's going to say that? Who's going to criticize the Supreme Court for the way they wrote their opinion from a constitutional perspective, not just from a policy perspective? Right. When see, it's like the they backed into this decision. Basically, the, the court is saying, even though they, they're writing, they're, they're literally writing, we're just doing our job. I think they even put that in there. We're just doing our job. But right. the reasoning 
reveals that no, they backed into this decision based on their own policy beliefs. Right. Yeah. And that could also have an effect um, down the road. What if they decide to take aim at like board, uh, Brown versus Board of Education and want to reverse that and use the same type of logic? Yes, exactly right. And, and, and that's the point. And they, and they said, well, this holding only applies to abortion because it's a unique act. Again, like, yeah, but that's not a constitutional analysis. And the door is right. still open now for them to come back and say, oh, birth control is also unique. Um, right. The right to the intimate conduct with your partner, that's also unique. Anything could be unique in its own way. I mean, that's not an analysis. That's not legal reasoning. And so the door is really open based on this decision to undo all of those rights that we understand ourselves to have now based on this interest of privacy. Right. So I I'm going to step, go back just a little bit here um, in the chat. Um, they're asking what exactly happened with this. Um, so uh, yesterday there was a leaked document that came out with this upcoming decision from the Supreme Court to overturn uh, Roe v. Wade, which is basically giving constitutional protection to people that have abortions. Um, and it's recognized at the federal level. So when it's not done and said yet, when the decision is published in, in roughly about two months, then it will be basically up to the states to decide whether or not uh, abortion is legal or not in that state. So um, if you're in a red state, you're probably not going to be able to um, have get abortions anymore. And so this is what people are, are upset about and, and debating right now. Right. The current framework that we have is kind of clunky, admittedly, and again, in the interest of fairness, if you read Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which are the two cases that created this right to abortion that we understand ourselves to have, the court kind of acted a little bit as, as legislators. I mean, I hate to, to say that because some people are going to say, hey, that's the right-wing talking point. But there is some validity to the idea that they basically wrote a law on what abortion is and how it can be regulated. Mm -hmm. um, not that I thought it should be struck down, but but if you read the original cases, what they ended up saying is that that pre viability, which is viability, is the period where a fetus can survive on its own uh, outside the uterus. Pre that period of a pregnancy, the state could not regulate abortion without uh, or or or. Um, uh, they could not regulate it and they cannot give you, I'm, I'm trying to phrase this, I guess, in, in, in not, not legalese, but in lay, layman's terms, but basically they, they use the phrase undue burden, meaning that they couldn't put a substantial obstacle in the way of you getting an abortion at that time. After viability, they said the state could regulate it, but they had to make an exception for life and health of the mother. But aside from that, they could even make it illegal if they wanted to. So there was this period of viability where they said, before this point, you have a right to do it. After this point, the state has a right to do what it wants within reason. Um, that is being thrown out by the Supreme Court. And what they're saying is state can now do whatever it wants at any time. Right. And I think um, I, I did get into a bunch of conversations yesterday or just listen to a bunch of the chatter that was going on on Twitter spaces, clubhouse discussions and whatnot. Um, and I think a lot of people are concerned with the, basically what they can do from here. People that were that um, support having Roe v. Wade are concerned what they can do from here um, because this is going to be, you know, pretty much it's going to happen. So in two months' time, that's going to be the new law of the land, so to speak. Uh, and Republicans, the, the conservatives, have been chomping at the bit for decades to overturn Roe v. Wade. So you better believe that they're going to be ready on day one to put something forth to try to, you know, ban abortion in their states and whatnot. So um you know voting is is going to be pretty much one of the main powers that people will have as far as um in the midterms getting in people who think more like you if you want a certain outcome you need to go to the ballot box and make sure that they're in office um, to try to fight these things uh, for you um otherwise you know there's really not much else that can be done outside of outside of that so that's a good point because we have the midterms coming up and all the data showed that there was more energy on the Republican side than the Democratic side. This might change that. Now, federally, there's really not much that could be done um, when the Supreme Court is kicking the law and the right to abortion to each individual state. This is becoming a state issue now, according to this decision. Mm -hmm. So 
you have to understand though that a lot of these state elections coincide with the federal one. So if you have uh, Democrats with more enthusiasm coming out to vote in these state elections, that could also play a role in what happens in the midterms. Big, 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 big uh, issue here. That's one of the one of the biggest controversial issues in the in the. I thought the it was decided. I mean, and that's what the Supreme Court had said before, essentially, that this court, this issue, was decided. And it seems like we're going backwards in society to relitigate issues of last century that should have already been behind us. <laughs> I understand exactly. I like Mike's. Um, I don't want to say argument, but I like his presentation because, like he said, he was presenting data where the Supreme Court seemed like it's politics and emotion. Um, whereas right. when Mike was speaking, he was presenting data and explaining what the outcome could be if this is the role that they're going to take because they're going to overturn a lot of things. So I was intrigued. I was like, "You go, man! You ever thought about being a lawyer?" <laughs> I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I know that it's a joke, right? It's a joke. I got, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell yeah. by, the, by the way uh, the language you used and and yeah. and everything that you said, but it made sense. Like you said, I like that you presented data and explaining, and that the fact that they went ancient history and not current event history right, the last right. 20, 30 years, they went you know, almost a hundred years. Well, um, and that's really insulting to the reader's intelligence. I mean. I understand when they say that the constitutional principles has to be deep rooted in history. So deep rooted suggests you go back, but that doesn't mean you ignore the whole past hundred years. I mean, to, to start in the 13th century, first of all, if they're talking about this nation's history, that's not this nation. Mm -hmm. So it's relevant for context, yes, but to lean on that and, and, and go for pages and pages on what happened in the dark ages, I mean, come on, that's, you know, that, that's taking the word originalist too far. And really not, it's not even being an originalist, it's being before there was a constitution, right? Yeah, it sounded like 98 pages of cover-up and BS <laughs> from what you told me. basically sums it up. But they, they, I understand tried, they, they tried, right? Like yeah. it's a cover-up, like you said, they tried to make it make sense within a constitutional framework, but then they even, if you read into it, they admit that they're full of shit because <laughs> they say, Ooh. no, because they, they, out. they actually <laughs> say in there, this opinion only counts on abortion. So that means that that entire analysis that you did doesn't apply okay. because that same analysis could be used on all these other issues. So the analysis right. is not real. Because they, they wanted they wanted this specific action. They wanted the outcome. They wanted to make sure to make that outcome happen any way that they could make it happen is what it sounds right. like the way right. it's, it's written. And the fact they're using the word unique and like you said, they can use that for anything. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's just a BS cover up word like hey because this is unique almost every case is unique. And you can, like you said, they might use that later down the line. Hey, let's revisit this because this right. is a unique situation. It's so unique. <laughs> yeah.